right, you guys, so today we are going to be taking some notes on the actual structure of DNA. Structure of DNA. Um, so yesterday we were talking about the history of DNA and some scientists who did these different experiments to help us um, better understand what DNA is and that it controls who we are and what it does and all that stuff. But today we're going to get more into the structure of DNA. All right, but before we get to the actual structure, I just wanted to go over a little bit about the history of DNA and who are the key players in um, giving us a better understanding of what DNA is. All right, so first guy here, we have Frederick Griffith. Um, now what he did was he was working with different types of bacteria um, and he was able to figure out by doing different experiments with this bacteria that DNA is probably, so it says he is probably, DNA is probably the genetic material. So he didn't know for sure, but by doing his different experiments, he found that DNA is probably the genetic material that controls us. All right, and this is important because, like we said yesterday in, in that video we watched, um, early on people thought that protein could be the genetic material because there's a lot more protein in our bodies. There's a lot of different types of proteins. They're all folded in these special ways, um, and there's just way more protein. So people thought protein must be the genetic material. Um, and so that's why people started doing these, gen these experiments to figure out, well, is it protein or is it DNA that's making us who we are? What's, what's the genetic information? Um, and so Griffith, he is a guy who did experiments to tell us, well, it's, it's probably DNA, probably not proteins. All right, continuing the history of DNA. Oop, too far. All right, so chromosomes are made of both DNA and protein. So just to recap, Chromosomes are those X shapes of DNA inside of our cells. So we as humans have 23 pairs of chromosomes. All right, and now Hershey and Chase, two more people here that we need to know about. So they did experiments on bacteriophages, which are just viruses. So they studied viruses um, and they found out that it is indeed DNA and not proteins that are carrying our genetic information. So Hershey and Chase, they gave us the knowledge of knowing that it is DNA that controls us and it is our genetic information and not proteins. All right, another person we need to know about. So Erwin Chargoff, he was looking at the actual components of DNA. Um, he looked at the inside of DNA and he found that there are all these, these bases in there. And there's four different kinds. Um, and he found that adenine and thymine are always in the same amount. They're always the same amount. And guanine and cytosine are always in the same amount inside of DNA. And so what this gave us was something that we call Chargoff's rules. So Chargoff's rule says that A is always equal to T and G is always equal to C. So if you're given a percentage of adenine, you can always get the percentage of thymine. So on your handout there, it tells you if you have 40% adenine, how much thymine will you have? And once you have that information, you can then calculate how much guanine and cytosine there should be. So keep in mind that the total has to equal 100. And if you, I'm just looking at these percentages now and realizing that these are a little off. Um, so since they are a little off, that just means that there must have been a few mutations in the, in the DNA strand, which that happens. So these are a little off because of mutations. Um, but when you're calculating yours, just, just have it add up to um, 100% and that will make it easier. All right, so this again is just reiterating Chargoff's rules here. So he told us that adenine must pair with thymine. 
guanine must pair with cytosine. So if A equals T, G equals C, always, unless there's mutations, like we saw in that last slide. Um, these are going to bond together by, it says, weak hydrogen bonds. So that's what's going to hold those bases together. All right, now remember, these are on the inside of DNA. So you have the sides, and then these bases are on the inside. So if you think of DNA being like a ladder, you have the sides of the ladder, and you have the insides of the ladder. And we're on the inside right now. This is, these are the bases. All right, Watson and Crick, so James Watson and Francis Crick, these are the two scientists who we credit with actually coming up with the final structure of DNA. Um, so this is a picture of them here. We have Watson and Crick here, um, and this is their structure of DNA right here. We saw this in the video yesterday. Um, it forms that double helix, so if you think of it being like a staircase, a spiral staircase, you have the two sides that are twisting around each other. All right, genetic material again, just like our bell ringer yesterday. It is DNA. The full, the full um, term there is deoxyribonucleic acid. So make sure you write that down, please. All right, now within DNA, we have certain chunks of the DNA that are the most important chunks, and these are the genes. So genes are just chunks of the DNA that are actually going to be coding for proteins. So DNA is very, very, very long. Certain segments of that DNA are coding for proteins. And then these certain segments are called genes. All right, DNA is a polynucleotide. So we're going back to biochemistry here. So DNA is, it's a polymer, a long, long polymer, so it's made up of little monomers. Hopefully we remember that this polymer, DNA, is made up of small pieces called nucleotides. All right, and when you hook all these nucleotides together, it makes a DNA molecule, a very big polymer. All right, so what is in a nucleotide? So there's three parts in a nucleotide that we need to know. Um, so we have a phosphate up here. And we have a sugar right here, and they are connected to each other. So a phosphate and a sugar. So that's two out of the three pieces, so we just need one more. All right, third piece here. We have the base, which is on the inside of the DNA ladder. Um, so the four bases, again, we have thymine, adenine, cytosine, and guanine. And so we have our phosphate sugar, and now we've added on that base. And it's called an N base because it's a nitrogen-containing base. It has nitrogen atoms in it. And there's four different um, nitrogen-containing bases. We have adenine, thymine, guanine, and cytosine. All right, so again, just remember that the bases are on the inside of the ladder. So you have your outsides of the ladder, insides, that's where the bases are. Um, the outsides now, these are made up of the other two things in the nucleotide. So we have phosphate and then sugar. And then we have phosphate sugar, phosphate sugar. So you should see a pattern there. They're alternating in the sides of the DNA. Phosphate sugar, phosphate sugar, it's a pattern. And that makes the, the sides of the DNA. All right, so something else that we need to know about the bases here. Um, so there's two different types of bases. We have pyrimidines and purines. And so the difference there that you need to write down on your paper is that pyrimidines are made up of a single ring, just a small little ring, one ring. All right, purines, they are a double ring. So pyrimidines are single ring, Purines are a double ring. Um, so just come up with some little way in your mind to remember that. Um, it's easy to get them mixed up, so if you could come up with a little saying or something, that would be awesome. All right, so the pyrimidines with a single ring, these guys are thymine and cytosine. So thymine and cytosine are just a single ring. All right, over here we have the purines, all right, and so that's, that's adenine and guanine. 
So those are the bigger bases. There's, there's a double ring for adenine and a double ring for guanine. So they're bigger. All right, down here, the last thing on the slide says base pairings. Purings only pair with pyrimidines. This is so important. So this has everything to do with Chargoff's rules. So if you think about it, if you have a single ring and a double ring, those are always going to match up and make the insides of the ladder even. If you have like a peering and a peering, for example, that's gonna be two double rings, which is gonna make four across. That's way too big. All right, so you always wanna think about it this way. You always want it to equal three rings. So you need to have a one ring plus a two ring to equal three rings, never four and never two, which could be possible, but that will make a crazy misshapen DNA molecule, which is not what we want. All right, so this picture is saying what I just said. So if you have two double ring bases there, it's gonna be too wide. If you have two single ring bases, it will be too narrow, and it's not gonna be big enough to fill the space between the sides of DNA. All right, but if you have a pure ring and a pyrimidine, so a double ring plus a single ring, it's gonna be just right. So like Goldilocks and the three bears, you have too big, too small, just right. So this is perfect, this is the winner down here. We want a pure ring plus a pyrimidine inside of our DNA for one rung of the ladder. All right, and so in order to do that, adenine always has to base pair with thymine, and cytosine always has to base pair with guanine. Always, always, always. All right, so this is just saying again that the size of the DNA are gonna be made of the alternating sugars and phosphates. The insides of the DNA are gonna be made of those bases, so in here's the bases. All right, and then one more fact to add on to this basis. Um, adenine and thymine, they're connected by hydrogen bonds and specifically there's two of them, two. So write that down. And then cytosine and guanine are hooked together by three hydrogen bonds. So write that down as well, please. All right, this picture is just showing you just that. So you can see the hydrogen bonds here. So we have thymine, and adenine that are connected by two dotted lines. So that's just showing you the hydrogen bonds. Two hydrogen bonds here. Guanine and cytosine are connected by three hydrogen bonds here. All right, another picture, a lovely diagram of DNA showing you that it is indeed a double helix. So think of it like a double staircase again, or if you have the ladder and it's like twisted around and around, that's what DNA is. All right, another picture here, more of a flat model, um, showing you how the bases are paired up in the middle. So they're following Chargoff's rules in the middle. A always goes with T, G always goes with C. Um, and then on the outsides of the ladder, so the outsides of the DNA, you have your phosphate sugar, phosphate sugar, phosphate sugar, just going on and on and on. All right, yet another picture showing you bases in the middle. Sugars and phosphates on the outside. Bases in the middle, sugar and phosphate on the outside. So at this point, you should, should have it memorized. All right, last thing here. So nature of the genetic material. So you have three different things. Um, so it's important to know that the genetic material, our DNA is what's making us who we are. So it's the information that is actually coding for the proteins that are gonna make our structures, the structures of our body, our hair, our skin, what we look like. Um, and that's gonna determine what, how we function, what we can do. Um, DNA is coding for our development and in our reproduction. Um, so it's, again, DNA is making us who we are. It's our genetic information. Um, number two here says, DNA has to replicate accurately so offspring can have the same genetic makeup. So that's why Chargoff's rules is so important. So when we go and try to replicate DNA, it, it follows a distinct certain pattern. So every time we replicate it, it's gonna follow that same pattern. All right, last thing. So genetic material has to be capable of having some variation, so some sort of mutation to it. Um, so due to the fact that mutations do exist in you right now, you have mutations, mess ups in your DNA, and that's fine. Usually most mistakes, they it doesn't do anything, it's fine. 
Um, but because of the fact that there are mutations, that is what allows for um, evolution to occur because changes in your DNA change the traits. Some traits are better than others. Some traits allow some organisms to live better, reproduce more, and so those traits will get passed on, and that's what evolution is, changing any species over time. All right, so that concludes our notes on the structure of DNA. If you have any blanks in your notes, please ask questions and let me know.